Like soon as as soon as I get to recording, you don't do it on the other call. You wait. Hold on. You want to say what's up? Coco wants to say what's up to y'all. What's up, Coco? You shy? You shy? She said I'm trying to get my camera time. Scared, scared straight. <laughs> Can you see me, guys? No, Miss Thomas, we cannot see you. Uh, it's only going to be uh Tamik and I. As far as the, the view goes, if we do bring you up, if you have a question or anything like that, it'd just be audio. <laughs> she's like, she she she's not wearing stuff that she's she she wearing something she ain't supposed to be wearing. She's like, wait, 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 y'all can see me. <laughs> <laughs> she's talking about no, there's too many O's on that one. That's how I know I'm telling the truth. There's too many, too many O's on that. No. All right, all right, Tommy, get it out. I see it. I see it in your eyes. I do look buffer. I am. I am looking. Right, here you go. Look- <laughs> here you go. It's like, no, how you been, man? I've been good. I was I, honestly, you said that I was going to say that too. I see, see, I can see, see the gains a little bit. You see the gains. It, I ain't even have to say nothing. The gains was yeah. here but when as soon as I turned on the camera, <laughs> you was like, "Whoa!" I saw it in your eyes. Uh, no, <laughs> but I'm I'm good though. I've been um I'm adjusting. Uh, this week added in more more weights, um, so adjusting my um, my diet to my output my my caloric output now. So just making sure I'm pop- properly fueled for for the workouts that I'm going into. So trying to work smarter now. That's one thing I, I've got to figure out how to eat more. Uh, so I did hire somebody to give me a meal plan. He was like, "Yo, you not you not eating enough at all." He was like, "I'm not sure how you're getting stronger." Uh, but you're not eating enough. So we're about to increase your calories by 500 to 1,000 calories. I was like, man. That's, yeah. I'm, I'll be eat. I feel like I'm be eating. I'm going to be stuffed. Like, he's like, yo, you got to drink a gallon and a half of water, and we're going to increase your calories by 500 to 1,000. And you got to stop doing the Stairmaster because I want you to focus more on uh, getting stronger before we get into a cut. So I was like, okay. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to follow your game plan, boss. You feel, Ooh. you feel I'm Mike. Just going to follow the triangle off and see how this goes. Yeah, I got back with my uh, my trainer that you met. So um, just been adjusting to that because I knew I wasn't eating properly because I've been trying to. Well, I've been trying been eating differently because I was trying to lose weight. So now I'm in a phase where I'm just trying to build strength. So I have to readjust. Um, so get back to the chicken thighs and, and vegetables and, and making sure I get all those calories like you about to do. But it's hard. That was a tough part. At first, I was like, oh, I want to cut down. But then I was like, man, I'm kind of liking actually being able to lift heavy, like mm. being able to squat heavy weight. Like I'm almost squatting 400. I'm almost benching almost 350. So it was like, yo, I've never pushed weight like this before at this size. I wonder if I can get like 500 squat and 400 bench press seem kind of that's like that's that's some sexy numbers there. Ooh, that's but I know tough. I got I got to eat a lot to do that. And then imagine if I cut down after that. Yeah, you'd be ripped. You're looking crazy out here in these streets, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's get the let's get the show started. So what we got for two cent Tuesday? Oh, you gotta hit the disclaimer before I hit that. Okay, so disclaimer: this is not financial advice. This is a medical advice. This is a relationship advice. Uh, this is just two cousins talking about current financial topics and possible relationship topics that you should do your own due diligence with. That changed colors, or that's the color of your. your... No, it's All just right. the color of it. Got to get my water in. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> um, <laughs> so two cents. So it's just been a theme. Theme I've been here well throughout my week. Um, and even just today, just on prior calls and being on the Peloton, it's and the, the coach is kind of yelling. Um, it's make make adjustments, not excuses. Mm, I like that. So. You know, I, I find myself like on on I, I start telling myself to stop telling myself what I can't do. So I just make the adjustment if I put my mind to it. Hey, if I want to run a mile after what happened, I just have to adjust my pace. I have to make the adjustment to meet myself where I am instead of making an excuse that I can't do it at all. Um, so that that was really what, what set with me today because I kept hearing that on my ride. And I'm thinking, like, man, why am I on here? Like, you know, and I'm like, hey, just just get through it. 
push, 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 make the adjustment. So the adjustment for me on a bike, and Rachel asked me this the other day, she was like, why don't you just do a 45 minute or hour ride? I was like, it works for me to do 15 minute rides because then I can switch up what kind of ride that I do. So I don't get to like that 40 minute mark and start questioning why am I on here? So even at 30 minutes, I can say, hey, I'm going to take a break and come back and do my second half hour maybe in 15 minutes. So hmm. I just make the adjustments and, and not the excuses to get some smart, smart way of doing it. Uh, uh, I, I don't have anything to add to that. I th- I'm just going to leave that one right there. I, th- I think you killed that. Hey, hey you. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that one right there. I'm going to roll into the, the first topic. You're going <laughs> to roll, roll, into, into. roll into the first one. So, so Target, with, with everything going on, Target is looking to get rid of inventory, which means which means sales. So it's probably a lot of stuff that's sitting on the shelf that they can't get rid of, that that people aren't wanting. So they're going to mark it down to make room for the new supply that I'm sure they got weighted. I noticed, and now that I'm reading this, we went to Target the other day, and there were a lot of containers outside in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Um taking up the parking spots and i'm like what's going on here so i'm like okay it's probably they don't have enough room for this stuff so we leave it out here in the containers and then this stuff is going to go on sale see this is the part that's scary for me it's kind of like telltale signs of recession depression and stuff like that like target walmart got too much inventory like people like these are big box stores that the average joe will go to right this isn't a luxury well, I guess some people can say Target, just the luxury brand of Walmart. But this isn't like a luxury brand where it's costing it will cost thousands and thousands of dollars to get goods. So when Target and Walmart can't sell stuff, it's kind of like, well, what is really going on here? Like to me, that was scary. So that's why I wanted kind of to talk about this part was like, well, a lot of people do go to Target. So first of all, if you want to go to Target, you might be able to get some sales going on now because they just got way too much inventory. And number two, hmm. Maybe stuff is really about to get bad if Target and Walmart have just too much stuff. Like people aren't buying as much as they were before. So what are people doing with the money? Are typically in times of recessions, people don't eat out as much. They maybe don't travel as much. They don't shop as much. I never would have expected to get down to Target and Walmart levels though, right? So if Target and Walmart is going through this and they're saying, hey, hey, for next quarter, our revenue is going to be down. If you're invested in those stocks, chances are you're going to see some downward pressure on that particular stock price. So if you were thinking of possibly picking up Target, maybe you wait it out to see how this kind of plays for the next earnings call and so on and so forth. And you don't get it now, you may pick it up a little bit later since they're already saying that our revenue is going to be down and that's going to be horrible for the stock. But to me, I was like, yo, Something is going on. Something is crazy. So if gas is up, rent is up, Target got too much inventory, it, it's about to be way worse than it is in the next six in, in the next six months or so. It's about to be way worse than it is right now for people. Yeah, that's what that's what I was taking. Um then you know the, the next well Kohl's is what the Kohl's is the biggest department chain right now. Um mm-hmm. and they're they're putting up for sale signs. So they're trying to sell to the owner of the the owner of the the vitamin shop. So uh-huh. they they um they've been trying a number of different things recently. They try to add Sephora into their stores, I guess, to drive people in. That kind of didn't work out, I guess, to towards their liking. So then they mm-hmm. put up a they they are in the works of trying to sell to the owner of the vitamin shop. Now here's the interesting thing. So Kohl's is pretty much getting pressure from Amazon, Target, and Walmart. So <laughs> Amazon just had a stock split, and I, I talked about this on Facebook a little bit. I I wasn't seeing like the appeal of Amazon in the stock split and stuff like that. But when you um, maybe that could be a case for why Amazon, it's a, a trillion dollar company, right? If they're putting pressure on Kohl's to go out of business or sell, just like Walmart and Target is doing, then, huh, uh, maybe Amazon is a good thing. I know that's kind of off target, but now the, the Kohl's thing, I don't really shop at Kohl's. Like, so I wouldn't know too much about them at all. So if anybody who shops at Kohl's kind of let me know the appeal of it all. 
but um how do they what is what is Coles in comparison to like a a Target or a TJ Maxx, right? Do they sell different stuff? So I think they're they're the Target TJ minus... Maxx is a clothing store, right? Yeah, TJ Maxx, they they are Target like sells clothing. clothing and other stuff. Yeah, I would say if I had to describe Coles, I would say it's Target minus the groceries. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can see how that business is getting squeezed out, right? Yeah. Like, if I'm not spending money to go to the store, chances are I'm still online, though. So if I'm still online, then I probably can go to an Amazon or some store online to get my stuff delivered there. So I can I can kind of see that. I can, see how, I can see that going away. And their prices are a little typically higher than like going to Target and things like that. So that's another reason why people probably will just go to Target or Amazon. Mm, okay. Okay. But yeah, that was that was interesting. So <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. All right, what we got next? We got um so the companies, well, we talked about this before a little bit, but a lot of the tech companies are putting a freeze on hiring and mm-hmm. and are starting to make cut job cuts now. So Elon, so Tesla specifically uh, was saying that they're going to make a uh, 10% cut to their em- employee numbers. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. That is great. Amazon says something like that too. They, they believe Amazon said I, oh, we overhired uh, during the last year or so. So now they're going to be possibly making some cuts also, but this is also a telltale sign of things ain't going to be looking too good. Right. But chances are if, uh, Tesla's making um, hiring freezes. They're making cuts. Uh, maybe it's going to be more downward pressure on the stock in the next couple of weeks. So if you were interested in Tesla, um, it might be a time in the next few weeks to start dipping your toes in the water to get some shares. But the way I look at this, this kind of shows you what's the direction of the economy um, is going. Once tech stops, like tech, that like we, we're growth, we're no longer going to hire. We're doing freezes. Uh, for uh, for innovation company that that is that that's scary and these guys are typically on the forefront of stuff and he's literally screaming us from the mountaintop like yo it's about to get bad it's about to get bad so they're they're kind of prepping us for what's going on with our economy and things like that so when facebook apple tesla stop hiring they start playing defense then you know um it's it's going to get bad pretty pretty soon so i would say uh, start saving up your money, have your emergency fund in place, things like that. Um, unless this, uh, the, the, so you can survive and pay for stuff over the next few months. Yeah, definitely. Um, that was real, real interesting because that's where everybody or at least like that. I knew that people that were trying to, uh, put in applications and find jobs were going tech. I just seen so many people talking about, uh, apply, apply to tech. And now here's a, here's a freeze, like you said, which to me is a telltale sign of, of some things. Well, it's weird because at one point they're like, we can't get people to come to work. And then it's going to turn over. Like it was, it was like, uh, if you were seeking a job, you had tons of options and pretty soon it's going to flip back over Mm -hmm. to the employer side of the house like okay well we're only hiring selective people here so you can play the game of not wanting to work at all as well now another side of this coin could be this elon did mention he don't like remote working so he said something to the fact that you know dang near effective immediately y'all everybody's going to be coming to the office for 40 hours a week because i'm at the office 40 hours a week so maybe this is a way of forcing that uh forcing the cuts right because you know for the last two years people could work from home people moved they they if you was living in new york i didn't move to idaho or florida to get save some money and now you want me to come back into the office um this could also be leaning towards that as well but um yeah they mentioned supply chain issues and i don't think that's going to be cleared up anytime soon like you still kind of got a war going on and which people seem to be forgetting about yeah uh which is uh destroying some things as far as far as uh some of these companies be able to move and be as fluid as they want to be so talk about being defensive these companies being defensive Uh, Mm. credit card companies are also playing defense now so um according to reddit there was um someone who mentioned that bank account was closing their account and says i feel like i'm drowning so they said i got a notice 
uh, today that Bank of America is closing my account because of a business decision. Uh, I'm assuming because I just missed another credit card payment uh, three days ago. Um, I mean, that, that'll likely do it. If they're playing defense and you missing payments, seem like they're going to be quicker to, to, to kind of cut the cord. Or if looking at cards that have no usage. Um, That's true. Because I had that happen with my Amex. They were like, oh, you haven't used this card in like five years. We just want to cut this limit. Um, but we also just talked about uh, defaults are going up, right? So I think everybody, a lot of people, and you look on your Facebook timeline, a lot of people are doing business credit and they're doing credit repair and they're telling you how to get these credit cards to, to fund your business and so on and so forth. Well, what happens when the banks start playing defensive like they did in like 2008, 2009, where they just start cutting credit limits drastically or they start to make business decision and cut you off, right? That's that's what's happening here. Like typically if you miss a payment, they don't just say, yo, we closing your car and you're going to have to pay us off. Now that's happening. Uh, to me, this is all future telling. Like banks are in the business to lend money, to get loans, to make money off interest. Once a bank stops doing that, they're holding the cards a little bit close to their chest because the economy isn't looking too good, right? And I think the consumer tends to find out late, but these are some telltale signs that, hey, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Jobs aren't hiring as much. Inventory is up. Like we structured this call to, it's like flowing a certain way, right? Inventory is high because people aren't buying. Gas is high uh, as well. Uh, companies are no longer hiring. They're putting in freezes, talking about they're making cutbacks. Now your credit card companies and your loan companies are saying, hey, uh, yeah, we're going to shut down that limit. We're going to shut down that line as well. That's letting you know how bad it is out there once a bank starts saying, yeah, we're, we don't want to collect interest. We're just going to close this card. Hmm. Got to be got got to be a little bit more careful. You got to uh, make sure your financial house is in order um, because it seems like stuff is about to hit the fan. Yeah, that for sure. Um, let's see here. We got app. So Apple wants you. Uh, of course, we 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 know this with with the card and everything, and just the accessibility. Apple Apple Wallet. Apple wants your phone to be your wallet. <laughs> um, I would say some sometimes it does come in handy, but it's no. Wait, it, wait. What do you what do you mean by Apple wants your phone to be your wallet? What does that mean? So they're adding they added new features to to the apple wallet to, to pretty much be able to hold you, you can do everything with the apple wallet you can put your plane tickets on there you can put your, all your credit cards your debit card and uh so they're they're they announced software to be in uh with the ios 16 to come out this fall um to take on services like paypal and affirm Mm. So this is a weird thing. Like Apple went from like a tech computer company to a damn near everything company. They got their hands in almost everything. So my question is, how, how comfortable are you with Apple having being your your wallet and, and, and all that stuff, like having all your credit cards in there, doing buy now, and pay here now with the iOS 16? Is that is that something that probably needs to be broken up or is that something that's more par for the course? They seem like just like a super company that won't that can't fail now. I think they got they have a very big following. So I think that people are going going with the flow um, with, OK, well, they're, they're transitioning and they're making it simple. Everything. Everybody wants everything mm -hmm. simple. So it's if we could put your wallet have everything on your phone you don't need to carry a wallet anymore and you got it right here so but me personally i'm not that comfortable with everything being in, you lose that then what that's that's yeah yeah man you, you lose your phone you're already sick now you just lost your you lost your whole wallet you lost all your credit cards you lost everything too and see the other you don't thing you need to put put in no pins or anything like when you do the the, the tap to pay it just Okay, approved. So somebody get your phone, get in it, then you kind of mm, somebody you hack know. your phone. Yeah, somebody hack your phone. They got all your money. Yeah, no different than if they got into your cash app and they, they'll send themselves some money or something like that. Right. See, see the other interesting thing is this: it's like they're moving in. I, I see the wallet thing, the Apple Card. It looks like they're trying to move into a payment space, also, like you just mentioned, right? But they, I believe in iOS 16, they allow you to do like buy now, pay later. 
Yeah, they do. I, I was going to get into that. They are the, the latest to, to join the buy now, pay later game. So um, they kind of been doing it with like their Apple products and the Apple card. But it's interesting. It's kind of like, wow. Um, if now they become the next Visa, the next, you know, the next Stripe or PayPal or, or maybe even bigger. That's crazy. Um, that's a, a pretty interesting another line of revenue for them. Right. It's kind of like they can just essentially use all the cash they have on hand and in their their huge platform to be able to now make interest the damn near be a bank, which is crazy to me, which is that's crazy. Like they have every single last piece of data for you. They got all your contacts, they got all your photos, they got everything in the cloud. They now they got your payment history data. Yeah, that that is that is a, a very big dangerous company i mean they are they're the second biggest company in the world i believe or maybe the first it's going back and forth between them and somebody else but um that is um interesting that is interesting i probably will never use those features but yeah, it's crazy thought- it's crazy to go from a computer to a computer to web services to uh government contracting to fintech to uh to everything that they're doing right and even think about it they went from Cause I got the first phone came out in, I believe like 2008. So, you know, it's not like they've been, I mean, they've been in the phone game for a bit, but they haven't been in phones forever. So to go from computers, the phones to. And possibly cars and headsets, <laughs> VR headsets and everything. Right. Um, and they got rid of them, the iPod, one of their, their staples. So is they're going in, in way different, you know, different directions now. So it's, it's, it's very interesting. But like you said, I don't think I'll be using like a buy now, pay later or any of that. No, I, I do like the stock, though, because they have so many different lines of revenue, ways to make revenue. Um, so if you guys were interested in purchasing stock, you could buy there in the S&P uh, 500. So you can use VU, VTI, any things like that, or you can um, buy them directly. Um, full disclosure, I do own shares of Apple and uh, I do like them. And I'm a, I'm a fan of, of the card. I, I have the card. Um, I think it's a good tool with the way that they teach how to make your payments, how to avoid interest. So they took a different approach. So in, in the app, they show you what payment to make to avoid being charged interest, which is the right way to, to handle things. So I think it's, it's a good tool, especially for like getting into the financial space and learning and to just set those habits of, hey, I need to pay this by this date so I don't accrue interest. Do they alert um, you as well on your phone? Yeah, it'll send you an alert that a payment is due. And then when you go in, it shows you a circle. You can pay in full, but sometimes it doesn't require the full payment to not be charged interest hmm. based on like the 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 cycle, the reporting cycle and things like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I so I, I like it. I, um, And then their their cash. So you get. I mean, I, you, of course, get the most rewards for shopping at, at Apple, but um, and using Apple Pay. Um, and then that the, the cash back converts into cash in your Apple wallet. That's actually genius, right? Because if I sell laptops, phones, watches, accessories and things of that nature and I mark up the price and I give you financing, even if you were to pay me back with no interest, nine times out of 10, people are purchasing more of my stuff because I'm giving you a finance option. <clears throat> now, if you happen to not make the payments in full by the time that 12, 12 months or 18 month due date comes up, I now get to collect the full price of my marked up materials plus interest on it. Right. Like their revenue probably has to be insane just off the strength of introducing that. That is smart as heck. That is that is like the that is business um, business masterclass. If you have a product or service, if you can figure out some way to offer some form of financing, and then your other entity controls said financing, what? Smart man. Yeah, they got it. They got it right this time. Got that on lock. Their financing. <laughs> they got that on lock. That's genius like how do, how do you you can't compete against them in, in, in certain in certain niches and that's not even talking about their apple music right wow in 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 the app store where they get 30 
percent or forty percent of every single last transaction. Again, they just make it so can so convenient that it's like they can't be denied. Like uh, it, it's scary. <laughs> Business lesson: if you if you can build something, you can make it convenient, make it easy to purchase, and it's good and it works. Chances are you're gonna be around for a long, long, long time. Right. <laughs> All right, so so the last thing we got here is the World Bank says that the recession will be hard to avoid. And they kind of attributed to, I mean, the war, as we talked about, the uh, potential war with the, the remarks about China and Taiwan. Uh, uh, what else did they say? They said that it was um, the supply chain disruptions, lockdowns in China, and the risk of stagflation. Mm-hmm. Are all that's attributing to hammering our growth? I mean, it's just a lot of stuff. Like, even if you look at it from like a day to day thing, uh, and we talked about this, okay, you got gas is higher, rent is higher, student loans aren't still going to be due, uh, jobs are no longer uh, hiring like crazy, they're putting in freezes, possibly making cuts, um, and inventory is high. Like, it, it is, it is going to be pretty sucky for the, probably the next year or two. Right. It's kind of like uh, even if like I don't foresee the supply chain stuff just suddenly clearing up, like especially if you're dealing with new viruses that pop up left and right. You still got Corona and you got monkeypox then you got a war going on. All that stuff needs to clear up. And it takes even if it was to clear up tomorrow, it still takes some time to get the system going again. Right. So it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's going to be worse for certain places. Like there's some spots in the U S like we don't have a, a food shortage, like certain other places in the world have, right. Like certain places they're starving. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's, this is going to be, this is going to be pretty bad. It's just kind of like, it, it didn't really, it didn't really reach us yet, but it will. It will. So, and hopefully it's not that doom doomy. So one thing that I read, it was saying <clears throat> they were saying that um, the Fed responded too late um, with with China. And then another thing that I read is 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 not just all on the Fed. I mean, I think there's a lot of issues going on that's contributing to it. Um, but as we talked about, they did kind of step in a little late to kind of start making a correction to to things, but. I don't think it just lies on them. I think with all these different issues going on, there's a number of different things that are just hitting us at the same time that are contributing to, uh, you know, hammering the economy. Yeah, I think it's gonna be one of those darned if you do, darned if you don't type situations. Like, <laughs> uh, when was the time to kind of step in when coronavirus first hit the scene and then everyone drastically panicked and the stock market crashed by 40% in a month? Uh, or was it like you, you don't know when they ripped the bandaid off. Right. right? But uh, it seems as though they're moving in the right direction now because inflation start going crazy. So they have to go with the policy that they're going with. Um, but and then also then a war happened. And now, you like you said, you're facing you're fighting several fronts of things that, that are going on at once. Um, but we'll see. It's going to be an interesting, interesting year. Yeah, the rest of the year, I would yeah. say. But I don't I don't I don't think the stock market is going to go crazy for this year. Like typically they say sell in May and go away. So on the back half, it's this is when things tend to to go down a bit, even if, and we notice that even companies who might make make earnings or they do well. The market don't move. But if you don't make earnings, it's like like good news is bad news and bad news is worse news. That's how seem, th- things seem to go. Um, so it is it is what it is. I would say if you are in investing right now this is got to be your accumulation phase this is where you where millions are made truth be told when companies are on sale 40 20 30 40 50 percent off they will come back you know there's nothing wrong with apple there's nothing wrong with their facebooks your amazons your googles and things like that they're they're making money hand over fist it's just how the economy works right now that things are going to be on a downturn um, same thing for housing, like housing has yet to take a hit. Now I'm just curious on when that will happen, right? If rates keep going up, people can't borrow as much money to buy the expensive houses. So something needs to give. Um, so I guess we're going to see what, what happens if housing hits as well in the next 12 to 18 months also. 
No, no, I agree. I, I definitely agree with that. And then, as as we say, there's there's just that that one monkey that they keep kicking the can with with student loans too. So, <laughs> I read somewhere that uh, it, that they're going to delay the announcement to closer to when the the expiration of the extension is supposed to be. So, of course, we talk it, about this. They're gonna keep we, kicking that can. <laughs> I'm not playing my big joker. To my own. as soon as as soon as you cut. Like what I look like, I'm gonna I'm save that. I don't know if you got an ace. I don't know if I have he uh, our uh, our current administration has to hold off on that one because if everything is crappy, I can't play my student loan card right now. Right, it's too early to play. It's too early in the game to play. Unfortunately, that's politics for you, but it's too early in the game to play. Now imagine that. Like, how do you think people are gonna react with gas being forty seven dollars a gallon? Uh, <laughs> Uh, food costing a uh, hundred dollars for three chicken wings, and and then I got to pay my student loans. What? Yeah, people are gonna flip out for sure. What about the well, the federal loans, private loans still are due, right? Private loans still do now. It's just the federal loans, federal loans, and certain federal through certain servicers. So even some federal lo- loans through some servicers aren't included in the the uh extension of the or the pause mm. we'll see i'm just curious so I, I i read something where somebody was like i got three hundred thousand student loans ten thousand ain't enough I'm like damn like you're not even grateful for the right that's for, I, for the, for the I, possible I for, for the possible forgiveness i saw that i saw that i understand that their their point but also it's like hey i'm gonna be grateful because something is better than nothing but i do under they said that that ten thousand is in the drop in the bucket when you got three hundred thousand in loans, but uh, and then somebody uh, gonna say, "I nobody made you get three hundred thousand in loans." Though. Like it wasn't a, you know, what I mean, a firearm to. I'm not gonna say that. It's like no one forced you to to kind of get that done either. Right. Yeah, I can see how people play it that way as well. Yeah, you'll you'll definitely see that see that response. I'll just be looking at the comments, and I know somebody gonna say that. Um, but they made a good point. They were just talking about the interest because it's that's where the money is made. So it's like it's manageable is like, hey, if I pay back what I, I'm not against paying back what I owe. But you just you essentially you let me borrow this and I got to pay you back double and triple. That's that's the issue for people. I mean, and it's I, the same thing with a mortgage. If I take a mortgage I, it, for 30 <laughs> years at three hundred thousand by time, if I wait to the end of the 30 years, I'm paying back. 400, 500, 600, what's the difference? Right. I, I think it's just because is the, the dream that was sold. Like, you know, with the mortgage, you got your house. With, with the uh, the auto loan, you got your car at the end of the day. So now that degree, people are looking at them like they don't mean paper. nothing. <laughs> you, got to, you, can be any, you can be an astronaut with this. You can be anything that you want with this. You can be an underwater ceramic technician with this. A fancy word for saying the dishwasher. So I, I think that's that's what the 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 issue is. Is that at the end of the day, you know, with that mortgage, you got the home. With the auto loan, you got the car, and with the student loan, what you got now? You have an education. You are enlightened. You, you know are. how to 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 uh, write and debate and research papers and things. It depends. It depends. Like some people, the home ownership dream ain't a dream for everybody. Some people got into homes during the, uh, you know, the, the, the 2005 when everything was running up and immediately lost out on it. I mean, it, it is what it is. Sometimes we make a bad move. Yeah, sometimes we do. Sometimes we make a bad move. You like, got, it, like I say, you got to make those adjustments. You can't make the excuses. That is true. That is true. But yeah, I, I think that I think that was all the official topics. Did anybody have any uh questions in the chat that they did y'all want to come up? We can uh, answer anything for you. Just raise your hand and we'll bring you up to answer your said question. If not, we gonna call it a night. Oh, Denise says she had a question, but she got the answer to it. So cool. All right, I think that's about it. All right, so appreciate you guys. The replay will be up in twenty four to forty eight hours, and I'll be talking to you on Tuesday. Peace. See you next week. Peace.